What's going on, Clutch Squad? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Duck. It's your boy, Ross. And we in the Clutch, baby. Hey! Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another video today. You feel me? Back with another Mr. Ballin', the Angola Effect, horrifying death traps in the cradle of evolution. Hmm. This could be very interesting one. Hey, it's been a minute since we checked out some Mr. Ballin', but... He always be having the insightful stories and the way For he reals. tells them, it, it gets you hooked. You know, he's a channel you can definitely end up binge watching easily. And you'll be like five, six, seven videos in just amazed at what you're listening to. So I'll we're going to get right into this. Check out the positive version of the clips. Of the, uh, you said what? The, the positives in stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has some of them, but most of them, you know. GGs. Well, well, Wong, the Wong story, that it was, it wasn't the most Hell positive. Oh, nah, boy. Imagine that shit happened to you. True. But the nigga did get to fly with some aliens. That's kind of crazy. That's not cool, bro. You just traumatize your ass for the rest of your life. I mean, he ain't seen too traumatized. You never know when you're going to go to sleep if you're going to be. In a whole new <laughs> Where's Ross? We're supposed to record. I'm in a. <laughs> Fucking Thailand. Huh? What? This nigga in Russia. Oh, hell no. You know what? Never mind, bro. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, yeah. Leave me alone. Don't drop me there. They didn't want to fuck with you. Let's leave a black man over here in, uh... <laughs> in a fucking secret base. And they really going to have a problem. They going to... I end up starting uh, a new world war. How does black nigga get in this goddamn secure base in uh, fucking uh, Russia? That's it. <laughs> they wasn't me. Last thing I remember. It was the Americans. <laughs> they sent a black spot. Yeah, facts. They thought we wouldn't they thought we wouldn't be on to them. <laughs> they tried to trick us. Thinking we wouldn't care about them. Now I'm the I'm the reason why the new world was started. The war started. said Wong War Three. <laughs> yeah. right, let's get to it, man. Today's story is about a guy named John who just wanted to go surfing. And he would get a chance to do that. However, when he was finally out on the water, something super rare and super horrible happened See? to him that actually kicked off a series of more rare and terrible things that oh, all happened to John. No. I mean, this whole story is John so Cena? outrageous. No, it's not John Cena. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to see him. We wouldn't be able to see what happened. Yeah. That it just sounds totally made up, but I can promise you it's not. But before we get into that Damn, story, man. if you're a fan of the Strange, Dark, and Mysterious well, the story Cena? format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, <laughs> and we upload bro. once a week. So if that's Wick? interesting no, to you, it's not John please Wick. offer to make the like button a friendship Morris? bracelet that's using those little beads with letters on them. But make sure you spell on their Wong bracelet, John. nobody John likes F. Kennedy it before you hand definitely it up. Wasn't him. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's these, get into these, today's story. All these John, how many Johns do y'all know? John, John, I'm Oh my God, uh, lucky day. On an April morning in 1993, okay. a surfer named John Doyle was sitting Doyle. on a surfboard out in the Atlantic Ocean Doyle. off the coast of West Africa, Doyle. just scanning the water waiting for a wave. John was totally alone out here. There were no other surfers, nothing. And the only sign of human civilization anywhere was John's Land Rover, which was parked up on the sand on the beach. John was an American. He was from Colorado. And so his experience had always been, you know, lots of snow and mountains and trees because that's Colorado. But now here off the coast of Africa, it was like a totally different planet. And in fact, today, John was really feeling that because the sun was so hot that day. It was over 95 degrees Fahrenheit, Ooh. and he could actually feel his back starting to burn as he sat there, you know, Damn. waiting for the next wave. Nah. And so he told himself, actually, that he would just catch Sean one more John. wave and then call it a day <laughs> to avoid the sun. Oh, no. But as John continued to kind of scan out across the water waiting for this wave, he noticed about 20 meters away was a shark fin swimming. Was good. I mean, that water tells him, mm, you, mm. you taste that? Mm. Mm. Oh, I can, I can. It looked like you can cook. Mm. I like my food cooked before I can, I can eat. I can, I can sense some human about to tip into the, the pot. Nigga <laughs> 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 about to eat this nigga in the ocean stew. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> in a circle, like stereotypical, terrifying shark behavior. And so John is horrified and he wants to get out of the water immediately, but he's far enough away from shore that if he jumped into the water to swim to shore, oh, oh. you know, he's going to be in the water with the shark thrashing around. The shark he's just going to attract the shark over to him. And so John decides his only hope here to escape the shark is actually just to surf in. That way he'll stay out of the water. It's much faster. He'll get to shore. The shark can't follow him there. It'll be fine. And so okay. trying to stay calm, John continued caught. to keep his eye on the shark that was still 20 <laughs> meters away. And he also really looked closely for any swell coming towards him that might be big enough to allow him to surf to shore. And thankfully, after only a couple of minutes, John did see a swell coming towards him All that right. seemed like it would be perfect for a final wave. And so at this point, John is facing out to final sea wave. towards the swell, towards the shark that's still 20 meters away and he turns himself around, so he's facing towards shore, and then he lays down on his stomach, and he All begins right, to paddle to go. towards okay, shore. Okay. And as he's doing this, yep, you know, he's checking yep. the swell to see when it's gonna come up, when right, he can I'll... stand up, and eventually the swell is right underneath him, All right, and All as right. he's about to stand up on his board and actually surf into shore, he looks into the water that has not quite formed into a wave yet, oh, and he sees the shark. It's <laughs> What's up, nigga? What you thought you was about to do, man? <laughs> Where you thought you was going? Uh huh. Where you thought you was going? I watched that wave. You know that? I was watching it. I watched that whole thing play out just now. Where the fuck you thought you was going? This huh? nigga said, I watched that wave. You thought you was going to leave before I get a little bit of the taste? No. I might like my food to run, but I don't like it to run that fast. <laughs> He'll slow down, buddy. Come back in, you. Bro, that's wild. You that's all ready to hit your shit. You look down. What's up, nigga? Yeah. You thought you about to leave me? <laughs> you thought, cuz? Uh-uh. Food ain't like, going nowhere. Food like you is a delicacy. <laughs> I have a human tonight. Literally underneath him. And so John has this sudden surge of adrenaline and he just jumps up onto his board. He stands up and for a second, he's stable. He's surfing okay. and he's riding this wave away from the shark. He's doing exactly what he hoped he could do. He can't believe it. And then because he was panicked, because he was rushing, because it was a new board, who knows why, the nose of his board suddenly dipped just long enough to throw John off his board and into the water with the shark. And so right, immediately, piece, as this wave is churning John over, oh. he grabs onto his surfboard and just kind of holds on, and he's waiting for a moment when the wave stops so he can get out of the water, back on his board, and away from the shark. But before the wave even stopped tumbling him over, John suddenly felt the searing pain in his calf. And so John, who's underwater, still clutching his board, he opens his eyes underwater, then he looks down and through the cloudy water, he can see very clearly it is the shark and it's a great white shark that is latched on to his leg. Damn, and so now in a- GGs, bro. Yeah, no, it's GG's bro. That's he, ain't that. just, he, he ain't even say great white until right, now. Yeah, yeah. Right, I bro. mean, if he would have started with that, then we kind of would have already yeah. figured out. Which makes how... sense, because damn, want to kind of get the story some time to develop, but God. all you got to do is say GW. Yep. Total panic, John began punching the nose of the sh- Sound like some shit I do. <laughs> nigga, uh, start beating that nigga. Let me go! That's it, bro. <laughs> Whoop that shark. Whoop, Whoop that, that shark. <laughs> Whoop that <laughs> Giving out the beats to that damn shark. Start beating this shit out that shark. Yeah, bro. Beaking his shit. Hey, hey, what you doing? Catch him oh. in the eye. Yeah, poke him in the eye. Oh! Dog, you human. <laughs> hey, do whatever you got to do, man, to survive. Beat the shit out that shark. Shark. Oh, and right. when he did, the shark actually recoiled. Yeah, and released yeah look, his yeah. Long enough RP. that John could pull it out. He actually managed to get up onto his oh. board again. And just a second later. Hey, bro, that adrenaline was ooh, working overtime, bro. We, su adrenaline. we superhumans at the end of the day, bro. Yeah, when, when, it's, when your life is on the line. Cause I know, you know what I'm saying, getting your leg bit by a shark, you know, obviously you wouldn't be able to really use it. But the fact, hey, he beat the shit out of that. Situation, you gonna yeah. figure it out. Yeah. 
or almost out of instinct, he was back standing on his board, just surfing along with a leg that was now bleeding profusely into the water. And for a second, John was stable and appeared to be kind of moving towards shore again, but then the shark, it doubled around and swam at John from the side and literally smashed in. All right, bro, this yeah. shark. Yeah, bro. He eat this he shark like reminds me of that damn uh, I think, bro. Yeah, that crocodile, bro. All right, man. All right, bro. We get it, fam. We get it. This nigga, you got binked up and you said, nah, 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 nah. I like that taste. Oh, nah, nah, nah. That's cold, bro. Ah, oh, nah, bro. This nigga spent the block, bro. He spent the block. You spent thought that the wave. Punch, thought that punch was going to stop me, nigga? I'm hungry. He spent nah. the wave, bro. Nah, bro. We got to cook that nigga, bro. <laughs> I don't even eat shark, but today is a good day. Yeah, bro. Put that nigga on the Barbie, as they say in Australia. <laughs> Put that nigga on the barbie, bro. We about to cook us some good old shark today. Into him, knocking him off the board back into the water. Oh. But this time, John managed, when he fell the second time, to actually grab on to the board with both okay. hands. So he has two hands on the board. He's getting tumbled in the water again, but he knows the shark is going to come for him. And so at the last second, he pulled the board close to his body and kind of turned himself like it was a shield. And the shark Ooh. came flying towards him and bit him. But because he used that surfboard as a shield, the shark just bit the surfboard, ripped off half of it, and swam off with it, and began mauling this half of the surfboard. And John, with the other half of the surfboard, he somehow managed to stand up on it. Again, his leg is bleeding everywhere. Yeah, and he rode this could, damaged huh? half surfboard into shore, successfully away wow. from the shark. And so when John pulled himself up onto the sand, you know, out of the water, he looked back and he saw the shark swimming off. Found out this nigga and even though he's an extraordinary bro, fucking shark, <laughs> I will That's be up, bro. <laughs> nigga. I'll get you next time. I'll get you next time. <laughs> Don't you ever bring your ass back in these waters. Nigga was eating on that board. I <laughs> 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 mm. SpongeBob, wait. <laughs> Excruciating <laughs> pain from this attack, he was so relieved. He couldn't believe he actually just survived that. But John did not have time to no, think about, you know, what good out. fortune this was in a way, because he was an hour away from the nearest civilization. Oh, and between geez, where he was way, now yeah. and that town, there was nothing. There weren't homes, there weren't buildings, there oh, weren't offices, no. nothing. It was just totally wild lands until you got to that town. And so John knew he would need to get in his car and drive all the way to that town and then get the people of the town to go get medical help. Oh. So, I mean, he is hours away Ow. from getting the help he needs. And so he has no time to waste. And so right, he John. crawls through the sand. You know, his leg is killing him, but he's just so go focused back in the water. on getting up to his Land Rover. And he manages to get to his car. Uh -huh. He opens the door. He climbs in the driver's seat. And then as soon as he's in there, you know, he shuts and locks the doors. And then he grabs a white t-shirt that he had on the yeah, passenger wrap it seat around. and he ripped it into strips and he used those strips like tourniquets and he wrapped them around his leg, the leg that was bleeding from his calf. And he basically used this tourniquet to attempt to cut off blood flow to his yeah. entire right leg to stop the bleeding to save his life. But the wound on his right leg was so bad and so deep that despite putting on multiple very tight tourniquets, oh. It just wasn't doing very much. He was still losing blood at a pace so that likely would kill him before he got to town. And so John was kind of like, well, nothing else I can do but attempt to go to town. So he fired up his car, he reversed off the beach, and began making his way towards town. As John sped along the road, he began to feel very lightheaded. Oh, you know, between the pain no. in his leg and the extreme heat outside, he just felt very dehydrated and weak. And so he thought to himself, if I can't get a sip of water soon, I'm gonna pass out right now and then I'm done for. And so as he's driving along, John began fumbling around oh, his car, oh. you know, looking for any sort of liquid somewhere in the car. But ultimately all he found was an empty water bottle. And all he saw in every direction was just this barren African savanna with no people and no water anywhere. And so John just kept on driving, hoping eventually he might find some water source. And luckily, after only a couple of minutes, when his eyelids were really starting to droop and he was having a hard time focusing, he noticed up ahead there was a copse of trees with a little creek that ran through it. And so immediately, John pulled over and he got out and he hobbled his way over to the water. He, he laid down on his stomach, here. so his face is basically right over the water. And then he just put his face in the water 
and began to drink. And as he did, he felt his heart rate start to slow down. He felt himself relax a little bit. And he started to think to himself, like, hey, you know, I found water. I so much there are juice. Yeah, sorry. Shut up, niggas. Sure, you know, I'm doing okay. Maybe I will survive this. But right as John was starting to feel optimistic, he felt a new shooting pain on his right side. And so with a little bit of strength he had, he managed to turn his head and looked to see what was going on. And staring back at him was a lion who had just... Alright, bro. Alright, bro. Hey, bro. I ain't even trying to... Hey, I, ain't, hey, I, ain't even, hey, I ain't even trying to be that guy. Take hey, me to the king. John, John, yeah. literally, the, the lion king is staring at you. Now oh, it's time to see the king. My... Ha! Bro, this ain't even funny, bro, but it's like, this, so what are the you, odds of this shit happening? Like, you survive I, a whole shark attack with a piece of your board to to damn near die on the way to go to town to pull over for some water to get there and so, to actually survive enough to see some water to go get some to now being clamped on by a lion? God just wanted you, bro. He wanted you more. He wanted you more. <laughs> I like your admiration. I like your tenacity. I don't like it. He probably was keeping you alive just to see how much. How how hard you gonna fight for this life? Yeah, hold on. Let's see. He was in the room. Just hey, throw some throw a throw a line in on there. Oh my! Hey, he, I didn't think he was gonna do that with that shark. Hey, let's throw a lion in there, bro. Like, come on, bro. This I is a even... crazy movie, bro. Nah, th this really is like on some movie type shit. I'm surprised they haven't hadn't started working on this because this is based on true events. No, people ain't gonna want to believe this. There ain't no fucking way a nigga get attacked by a shark, a great white at that, to only get attacked by a fucking lion in the same day. How? That lion must be cold because he ain't hear him approaching or nothing. He just. This All he did was felt the bite. Oh. Hmm. Foo is already bleeding. I like it. I like it. What? Bit his side and was now growling and staring at John and beginning to move its jaw left and right to really oh. sink its teeth into oh John. Oh, my God. And right after these commercial plays. Okay, right. so if you're not Jeez. listening to our show called Run Fool, then you are... This is unbelievably painful for John, and he's already dealing with an unbelievable pain. Now this nigga got a sock of lion in his face. Ah, ah, he's just socking animals at this yeah, point. Hey, John, <laughs> might say already tenderized. Yeah, he was, he was wet and bleeding. Oh my God, what is this? Pain in his leg from the shark attack. And so John's experiencing pain that very few people ever get to experience. Oh, right. And it caused this unbelievable surge of adrenaline. You know, one that you would likely get basically right before you die. That was the it level of adrenaline he was getting. And with this adrenaline rush, he grabbed a stick uh -oh. and he began hitting this lion. Hey, who... oh boy, John. This nigga, John. Dog. John is a fighter, hey. bro. He, this nigga said, I'll be goddamn it if you don't fuck with me today. I didn't get out here by a shark. Not you, too. Leave yeah. me the fuck alive. With the last bit he got, bro. Hey, John. I don't know how this story ends, but John, you. Oh, I know how it ends, but I will say. John, you you fought. You was a real one. He John is a real one. We ain't John. talking about Cena either. John no. is the real one, bro. The beast master. I'm he saying. is the true beast master. John the beast. Yeah, for this sure. This nigga said, hold on, bro. I'm just trying to get a quick drink of water before I fucking die. And you think you're gonna eat me? If you don't get this is a motivational story though, low key. Facts, bro. This nigga did not give up. He was locked onto his ribs, oh. and he managed to beat the lion off of him. Oh, and the lion, you know, it only backed up maybe a few feet, and it's still totally fixated on John, and it's growling and edging towards him. But John, you know, all he could do was just attempt to get to his Land Rover. And so as soon as the lion had let go of him, he just stood up and kind of pathetically began hobbling as fast as he could towards his Land Rover. And he literally just walked past this lion who's still growling at him. Kind of oh, the nigga said, 
Much respect, little nigga. Yeah, he did. He said, "Hold on, bro. You ain't you ain't like them other ones, bro. It's something bro, about he, you." He saw the line just like this nigga just beat me with a fucking stick, bro. Hey, bro, that's something different, bro. You <laughs> y'all don't never do no shit like this, bro. You a new kind of human. I like them. <laughs> but nigga, if I catch your ass back over here, bro, yeah, you, you better, better better hurry your ass up. For my brother, don't come out here. That's wild, bro. This nigga John is that nigga, bro. He, he is him. He, he him. is him, bro. John is him. Bro. Trying to size him up, and he just kept on walking towards his car, and he was almost there when he noticed the sound of the lion growling behind him, which had been constant to this point, had suddenly intensified to the point where John couldn't even help himself. He had to turn around and see what was going on. And when he turned around, he saw now there was not just one lion, oh. but an entire pride of lions. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Now throw in, all right, he did good on that one. Now put about a whole, <laughs> put a whole pride now. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what John do now. Uh -huh. What is this? How you gonna get out of this one, John? <laughs> you can't. You gonna beak all of them? You yeah. gonna fight all of them? Come on, John. This nigga John start. Turns into fucking Captain America. Start packing up all these. I'm going to believe we have superhumans at this point. So he, <laughs> at this point if you start packing these niggas up, bro, I'm going to believe we have super <laughs> hidden hidden superhumans <laughs> that they don't want us to know about. Oh my. Hey, he he on some Drake shit, Twinny. <laughs> 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 John, John, <laughs> <Yep>, John is Drake. John is Drake. Go make some drums, nigga. <laughs> That's <laughs> we'll walk some that, nigga. Fuck right. Out. There was at least four lions that now had all formed a semicircle and were staring at John and moving towards him to eat him. But John really couldn't do anything about this. All he could do was just hopefully get to his Land Rover in time. And so John just turned back around. So his back is to the pride of lions a few feet away from him. And he just continues. Bro, John is different. John He's different, dear, bro. bro. Bro, John built different. I mean, Turn but, your back on a pack of hungry lions. What do you do, bro? This nigga John said, man, if y'all gonna take me out, y'all gonna have, have to fight for this one. Yeah. <laughs> bro, what the fuck? Lion acknowledged the pride. Hobbling towards his car. And as he walked, the lions began swiping at him and That's cutting his legs man. open and his arms open. I mean, they're like razor blades just being taken to the backside of him but they didn't launch a full bore attack on him. It was like they were just kind of testing him. And then right when the lions were basically about to actually pull John to the ground and eat him was when John got to the door, opened it up, jumped inside, shut it, and locked it. Man, I would have tried to turn that shit around and start chasing these Oh, chickens. nigga, I would have been, I would have been, it would have been bumper cars. <laughs> I'm going to show you if this is the last thing I oh, do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh no, nah, don't run! Don't run! I'm gonna have a bunch of roadkill out here. Cause I'm going on a bumper car. <laughs> I'm going. If it's frenzy. the last thing I go out on, I'm taking these fucking lions with me. Oh yeah. I already couldn't get the shark, but I can get you niggas. I can get you niggas. Hold on. Let me put this shit in reverse. Oh, you want it? You want stuff? Come on. However, when John went to grab his keys and start the car. He realized he didn't have the keys. And when he turned and looked outside, he saw the pride of lions and his car keys on the ground. He was doomed. He knew there was no way he could get those keys without getting killed in the process. And so John basically just- Like you said, bro, I, I never questioned a man upstairs, but that's, all right, now have him drop the keys mysteriously. <laughs> no, no. Drop, let him drop in the middle behind where the lion's at. Bro, so now that, he got to decide whether on. now he got to decide whether to bleed out, bro, or what go is... and get killed. Come here, bro. Nah, this is this is something out of a fucking survival horror movie, bro. Like this is God is finishing charge. <laughs> bro, oh my, oh my God, bro resigned himself to die in his car right here like he knew i'm gonna die in the next few hours there's nothing i can do and so he just kind of sat there and waited and 30 minutes later john heard a very loud almost explosion sound coming from somewhere outside of the vehicle 
and then he heard it a few more times, and before long, the lions were so startled by it that they ran away. And then he hears what sounds like a series of shutter flashes, like camera flashes, and you know, he's looking around, he can't quite figure out what's even going on, because Please again, he has all these injuries, he's lost so much blood, <sighs> and then eventually, John just kind of passes out, having no idea what had just happened. It would turn out there was actually a safari that was happening in the area where John was at the same time. And Whoa. the safari guide, as they drove past this area, happened to spot John wow. inside of his Land Rover, surrounded by lions. And so as all the people in the tour began furiously taking photos of this crazy scene in front of them, the yeah, tour guide know. began firing his he rifle into get the packed sky up too. to scare the lions off. And so those were the noises that John was hearing before wow. he passed out. And then after he passed out, the tour guide and all the people on the tour pulled John out of his Land Rover, because now the lions are gone, and they would take him to a hospital where doctors and nurses would have to give him 250 stitches to Ooh. stitch up all of his various... Hey, God said, all right, you passed. You did well, my son. You proved yourself. You proved yourself. Because they ain't... That, uh, what? It'd be these stories where you survive all this shit and then die by a common cold that be killing me. <laughs> No, like, not, no, I'm just saying, you know, like you, you go and survive all this extra shit come on, and come back and just sneeze twice and it's like, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. What? Shark and lion wounds. John would make a full recovery and he would hang up on his wall in his office the broken half of that surfboard that he did successfully manage to ride in to escape the shark. He says Ooh. the surfboard reminds him like real how lucky bit, yeah. he was. Hey, John. Hey man, what's you, his I, name, bro? Uh, I, I forgot his last name. Hold on, I think it's right here. Tell why are you like this? No, I'm, just, I'm about to look up this nigga, bro. What's in the name? water, waiting for a wave. John was totally alone I, out I, here. I, I'm not sure. Hey, look, look, I don't know, bro. Doyle, right? Yeah, John Doyle. Yeah, there we go. John Doyle. Hey man, the man, the myth, the legend. John motherfucking Doyle. That should be his name. John motherfucking Doyle, bro. Because he is built different. Yeah, bro. He built different, bro. He got an Instagram, too. Is this oh, bro. I hope this ain't him. John motherfucking Doyle, bro. He he built different, bro. Nah, this, I hope this ain't him. Still fucking with uh, surfboards and stuff. Oh, it probably is him. You know, is he white? All right, then. Hey, man. It's not every day you get attacked by a great white and a pack of fucking lions in the same fucking day. That, that don't happen. He the real Bear grills. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, bro. John finished his story. That's that's crazy, bro. Um, that, that, just, just to know he survived all of that, bro. Is, that... Yeah, nah. That is crazy. People, a lot of people would have been hung it up, but he had a sure will to survive. Like that's the testament <clears throat> of the human will. If you want, if you willing to survive, you will do whatever it takes. God can throw all the crazy odds at you, but if you willing to keep going, you'd be surprised how far you can go. He got that dog in him. No, nah, it's a fact, nah, bro. He got the dog in him. They before. do need a movie. Based yeah, off of this. they need a. They definitely need a movie. The uh, John Doyle, or I would, they'll probably call it something <laughs> different, like some the Doyle effect. Some I don't know, bro, because Doyle he built versus different. the Beast. Yeah, he built different. Built different, bro. Anywho, if y'all enjoyed this, man, definitely. I, I'm actually glad that it ended on a on a, on a lighter note. Yeah. Um, but if y'all enjoyed it, y'all already know what to do. Make sure you want to throw a like, subscribe, let us know sure. what else we need to be checking out, man. Keep on supporting us. Keep on supporting Mr. Ballin. Definitely is the OG GOAT, number one when it yeah. comes to storytelling, man, of the strange, dark, and mysterious. Uh, keep on running up for him as well, but continue to spread love nonetheless and be love. Catch y'all later. Peace out. Shout out to John Doyle, man. Shout he out. did his thing, bro. This bitch is from Houston. If he got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.